Okay, these are going to be continuations. I'm going to probably just turn this into a little bit of a series here, a little mini-series on how your mind works, and we'll start from that point and include these ideas on the dream world, getting out of body, and solutions for your waking life as well as your dream world. A lot of people are um, talking about salts and these things they think they need to consume, certain kinds of metals, and I want to get right to the base for these, for these a lot of problems that exist. And it's this uh, idea, you watch the news, and they realize, oh, there's this white powder. They remember all through the years, there's always this confusing, weird white powder. What is it? It's cocaine, or it's anthrax, or it's something that people, it's some illicit substance. Yet, on every single table in the country, there is an illicit white substance called salt. Now, I'm not going to get into all of the history of this. You can watch my other videos for that. But certainly salt is akin. Almost certainly, it's a drug. It's been studied to have the same addictive qualities, the same types of behavioral mechanisms that are encoded into the system that cause people to crave it. It can be addictive. Not, not only just mentally, but more so physically. It's, it's more of a drug than just about anything. And when you connect this back to all the kings and the queens and people paying them insults and the diluted histories that we've been sold. But where we sit now is this idea of what people think of vegetarian food versus cooked food versus meats. And, it's all, and it really has to boil down to salt because what's happening is in the same way when someone smokes a cigarette or, uh, and, and again, this is not, I'm not putting tobacco on blast. I'm not putting alcohol on blast as they should be used because the organic variety, again, of what tobacco is, I'm not going to do that here, but it's always the chemicals that's the problem. So this chemical that is salt, what, what occurs in the same way when people are smoking a cigarette they actually are turning off receptor sites. So no longer are things in the brain as excited. They're getting filled up and used. So, so basically the, the chemicals within that are now, from that cigarette, are now consumed into the body and that's the source of the excitement for the brain rather than an internal excitement that is that would be there initially then now we're using a substance meaning a substance something else out of the body that we put in the body instead of being as a, uh, an, a something that is used for heightened senses in the way that tobacco would be used ceremonially uh, ceremonially it's used as an addictive thing and it turns off and is looked at as an uh, an addiction physically and mentally and so when someone goes through the process of quitting smoking, it can be a pain, and there's pains that are a lot that go along with it, and there's um, there's a certain level of um, turning the receptor sites back on, and that happens by basically cleaning out the toxin that is there, that is the the addiction there, the the chemical that's there, and we can rerun this right along the side. So uh, a parallel with what salt is, these addictions to salt. And what it's doing is people get off of salt and they think food is boring, it doesn't taste right. Well, because your, the senses in your body were heightened by the salt. The salt was the, in no, in, in no different way than cocaine, as you're, you have heightened senses. They're, the sense of salt to make food taste better meaning vibrate faster, is what's occurring. And now your brain is not doing that. But it takes a little while for your brain to get back to the point of doing it on its own because you're releasing all of those chemicals and especially just the salt in and of itself. And again, there could be so many different things in salt. So you're getting rid of the, the need for that to excite your brain and to excite the food molecules. And so it'll take a little while before food tastes normal again and then get to the point where food tastes exciting where it is what it should be the way you see you put a certain substance in in a child's mouth like a fruit a high level high vibratory food the fruit 
and it, and they're excited and they see the and you see the wonder and the curiosity and all of a sudden people start taking things that are low vibratory meaning a cooked dead animal product or low vibratory like what would be a potato raw right so how do you make it high vibe you heat it up you're increasing the vibration you put salt on it you're increasing the vibration and now all of a sudden you have a salty french fry and and that excites the system but there's other ways to go about it. If, if you left that potato underground, let it turn into the plant it would be. If you take whatever root system, and we, let's get right to this. If we take the root vegetables and the, what those are making, there, yeah, there's certainly a reason to make teas out of these and getting into all of the alchemical processes of using roots. But <clears throat> if we were to leave that in the ground and let the plant grow, the fruit and the leaves that come out of it are the high vibration. That is the energy. That is, that is the expression of that root. And so that high vibration now can be collected in its entirety and, and the body will assimilate that and use that for the energy and for the, for the vibration, for the motivation. But now what we've done is we've gone out into the rainforest and we found these shamanic tribes and these, these healers and all these wisdom keepers and We've taken their plants and we brought them back to our labs and we've cut them up, chopped them up, turned them into the most, the one inorganic salt that we'd like to mimic in a lab, put on a registered trademark, and then we say, oh, this is exactly the same as that. And it's, but it's, it's worth this much money. And so what we've done is we've taken the organic thing, turned it into inorganic and to an inorganic variety, we've boxed it up, put it into a cube, <clears throat> we've sold it, and it doesn't have all of the value of what that plant life would have been to begin with. So we've, we've actually taken it from what the, the fruit would be, to what the plant would be, to what the root would be, to the thing that produced the root, which is the salt. And the, in, the, in the highest form of alchemy, that's the process. And the highest form to get the essence, meaning to use the alcohol or use the smoke, or even to actually pull out the essence in the, ter in the form of what actual salt would be out of that, that would be the essence, but it would be a whole process. But now what we have is we have an inorganic salt that could be, um, you know, a registered trademark can be put on it. It's not organic. It doesn't have any life source to it. And it's just a mimicry and doesn't have the life in it. But then it's instilling something into us, and so we become addicted to that property. And I've, I know we took a little bit of a long journey there to get to an idea, but it's very important that we understand what's going on so that way we can see the, the value of changing over our programs and our systems and our ideas so that we can um, you know, get rid of the simple addiction. Because once again, as I've always pointed out, addiction comes of addiction. Diction is words. Diction is to dictate. It's dictated through words. And if we can get that language out of our head that says, oh no, you need that salt. Oh no, you need that. And we know why it's not needed. Then it's an easier transition. Then the physical addiction doesn't occur as much. The physical addiction is a secondary product of the mind frame of the addiction of saying you need that. The physical thing is always secondary. And we can bypass these physical pains and ailments that we might have by using breathing processes of people that have addictions, going through breathing processes to get rid of the addiction that they have to the words mentally that actually cause the problem physically, which is the addiction to these salts. And now what does this have to do with the dream world? Well, <clears throat> when we have a dehydrated brain, it's all clogged up and we have short circuits occurring in our brain. We have salts in there and we don't have a very still, calm, clean water in our mind. There's no way we're going to be able to cast memory, water and light, to cast an image onto that still lake, that still pond, and be able to see it, and to be able to have any recall, recollection of what that dream might have been. So there's so many things that people tell you to do so you can have lucid dreams. They'll tell you to you know, ingest this plant substance, which is helpful, and it can be done. And they tell you, uh, do all these mental processes before bed, which they're, they're helpful and they can be done. But the source of these dilemmas that people have with being able to participate 
in their subconscious mind as well as get out of body and have lucid dreams have to do with the connection of the spiritual and mental body to the physical body. Meaning if you look at these waves here, if we look at the blue wave as say your spirit body, the green wave as your mental thoughts, and the pink wave as your physical body, we can, there, there are times when you're awake when all of those are lined up, the exact same harmonic, and everything, and that's when your times of your day and your, everything feels like it's going along perfectly because your mental, your spiritual, and your physical is lined up and you're in harmony. But at night, now what happens is those things are out of alignment. And, and most of the time during the day, your body, your mind, and your spirit are out of alignment. So everything looks chaotic. Now, what does this have to do with getting out of body? Well, your spirit body is not your physical body. So when you're sleeping and your body is asleep, you can be awake. So you, you put yourself into a system that allows your body to lie there in a very long wave and you excite your spirit body so it jumps outside of the harmonic that is the physical body and you can get outside of that. What does that have to do with salts? What does that have to do with water? Well, if you have salts in your brain, salts in your body, th th that's going to short circuit each one of those things right there. Each one of those vib vibratory patterns, if you put a piece of salt somewhere, you could trigger something and short circuit something. So now all of a sudden, oh, you couldn't remember something. You can't, how did that work? How did you not get out of body? How, how, did, how don't you not remember your dream? Because there were salts in the way. You were assaulted. And so it took you out of a vibrational pattern you would have a fluid vibrational pattern until you throw something in the matrix that allows a cubing or an incubation of a mental process or a spiritual process that, that clogs something up, clogs up a memory. So getting back to how all of this works as one holistic unit, meaning the mind, the body, the spirit, the dream world, the subconscious mind, and your waking life, you need to clean your body out and use the most basic elements. And the most basic element everyone should be aware of right now, because it is time of Aquarius the water bearer, if we look at larger cycles, you should be using water to clean your body out. And the fire that we talk about is a fire that you have inside of you, even a fire outside of you, the fire that is the computer to give you information, so that information is your fire. The water is literally water, quite literally the water that you'd be consuming and you want it clean and clear. And then the earth is what your body is and where you stand and how you ground yourself. And then the air is the, the breathing patterns. It's even speaking. If you have something to say, if you have value in your language, if you have a truth to be spoken and you speak it, it will be heard. But if you have nothing to say, that's just fine too. Then breathe it in. Then breathe in what everybody else is saying that has value. And then you'll breathe things in. And if it doesn't have value, it will, it will, it will find its way to the, back to the earth, back to dirt, back to nothing. So it can ingest and consume things that vibrate correctly with you. It's easy to feel, but if you think about what you if you think about it and you get into the emotional aspect, you won't find it. You won't find it. But we can we can see certainly that salt has a very negative effect on access to the dream world, access to comfort, access to anything but addiction. Salt is an addiction. I need that, I need that, I need that. That's the mind saying, I need something. And then the physical property is the white powdery substance. So eliminate those things. And the process to getting into your dream world, to remember dreams, is, an, is just an analog. It just runs the same course as, as your waking life and the things that you think you're addicted to here. Because in your dream, if, you, if you're in a dream, think of it this way as well. If you're in a dream and you get excited about something, the word excited is exited. So you exit the dream if you become excited. You change your brainwaves and you jump out of the dream. If you become excited about salt or if you become excited about something during your waking life and you had a path and you would become excited or exit, you would exit off of your path to go get some salt. You would exit your dream. You would exit your path to a destination that had to do with your addiction. Those words that are going on in your head become the addiction in your dream. They become addiction in your life right now. And so there you go off your path to go get some salt. There you go in the dream off your path to go find something in your dream that wasn't what you wanted. <clears throat> so a little more about dreams, a little more about what can you do. 
Once again, water, cleanse. What kind of substances can you bring into your body? More oxygen. What kind of plant life? I mean, these are easy things. That's the bitter the, the bitter is the medicine. The bitter the better. If you're going to go to bed, the bitter the bitter is going to get rid of things. It's going to heighten awareness. It's uh, everybody's oh, I don't like that. Well, no, that's it's not that you don't like it. Let's get back to the the idea of what feeling and what emotion is. No, your emotion is you don't like the bitter. Your feeling is, whoa, that's a lot of something. That's the feeling. The emotion is, ooh, I, that taste is awful. Well, maybe if you didn't consume so much salt, maybe if you didn't consume so much white sugar, maybe those bitter elements might be tasty. Maybe you would get the vibration of what the bitter element is and you wouldn't taste the bitter substance. And maybe that bitter substance, the easy way to get it down would be a little bit of honey. A little bit of honey. And then all of a sudden you can put some honey in that tea, that bitter, bitter tea that, that will get you into the dream world and it'll make everything comfortable there. And that same tea that you can drink during the day. <clears throat> so find green teas and not just green tea. Find more bitter elements, more bitter substances. There's a quick Google search will give you probably four or five different uh, herbs, including mugwort is a popular one. And now these things, when you make a tea, when you make your decoction, it's going to be bitter. Lemon is helpful. It's cleansing. It's going to be better. You have to accept that. And But that bitterness will also enliven the mind because now you're going to be you're going to be experiencing that feeling of that bitterness immediately. And you're going to be in the moment of going, ugh. As long as you don't go down the past, I don't like down this path, I don't like that because blah blah blah. If you get away from that emotion of the bitterness of that herb and you just accept it for a while, that's a lot of substance, you can find your way into a dream might uh, quite differently. Anything else? Out of body. Um, these harmonics, once again, as I was talking about earlier, you want to you're changing. The harmonics of your body, of your mind, and your spirit. <clears throat> you, can, you can exhaust the body through movement, through dance, through meditation. Uh, excuse me. Through movement, through dance. You can, uh, you can get the mind into a different state by meditation. This is why you can see all, all different people can get out of body. There's different ways and different, way, there's different um, methods for doing it. It's just about changing something. You can, you can make the density of your body different. And you, so you could make your mind different. And by having a, a loose spirit, so the lucid, loose, lose your ID, lose your id, lucid, to become lucid, what you want to do is change the, change your body and change your mind and change your spirit. Those three things in unison, looking at those again as, as waves, if you were to exhaust yourself, well, that's one, one element of getting out of body. If you, just, if, you, if you just went and worked out, that alone might give you the capability of getting out of body without doing any meditation or anything spiritually. You could also not do anything in the realm of doing something physical and just have a good meditation. And that would change your brainwave just enough. So you've altered that. Or you could do something that combines all three of those. Do Having an idea of a spiritual practice as well, changing mental and physical things that you consume as well as doing something physical. You could upgrade all three systems. So if uh, anybody wants some more information on that, we'll get into that and we'll continue on these lessons of rewiring your brain and what you think about your body, your mind, your spirit and how to access different levels of your being, how to get into your dreams, how to access the spiritual realm, how to become more aware, more lucid, how to perform magic, what it really is. We're getting into a lot of stuff here, guys, so hope you enjoyed. Talk soon.